Well, 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 hello there. My name is Cellofish and, oh, what's that? You're in the mood to get your socks scared off? As am I. Well, in that case, grab a seat. Plenty of open chairs. Tie them laces tight now, because this is a haunting tale. The tale of the golden arm. Keep in mind, this is a tale passed down generation to generation in the fish family, and thus there are many variations to the plot. It was also a Mark Twain short story, which I didn't know, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Thus, I will do my best to piece together the most haunting depiction of events using my <laughs> very credible sources. It all started with a man. A well-traveled man in search of a wife. He had seen women of all kinds, poor, rich, beautiful, and plain. But alas, no cigar. Until one day, there came a woman that blew away his dream of an ideal woman. She was beautiful and fair and rich beyond what he could have hoped for, but to him, her biggest attraction was that she was an arm amputee. And no, he wasn't just a weirdo. Or instead of a normal prosthetic, she had an arm made of pure gold. This clinched the deal for the man, giving him the ability to show off his golden armed queen to his many, many friends. Oh yes, looky here, my my. The man married the woman at once, bewitched by the gold standard benefits she had to offer him. See what I did there? The two lived a very content life with one another, but with the passing of time, the man's love for the golden arm grew. The man loved the arm more than the woman. After her tasks were completed for the day, the woman would rest by the fire and remove her arm, applying polish and tending to its other maintenance needs, while the man would watch intensely. One cold night while the woman was polishing, she asked him, Promise me that if I were to die before you, you would bury me with my golden arm. I would miss it so. Oh, yes, yes, my love, said the man. Need not worry for a thing. And so she went back to her polishing. This life continued for many long, happy years, until one night the woman passed. The man, who, keep in mind, is more in love with the arm than the woman, puts on a mournful face for the funeral. He must show his many, many friends that he will miss his dear wife so. Once it was all said and done, and the church doors are closed, and he is once again alone, he begins to ponder, ponder the many things he could obtain upon selling the golden arm, a new house, perhaps horses, perhaps even a trip to Olive Garden. It's quite expensive. After all, the man loved it so much. He should benefit from it, not let it rot, he thought. And so, he opened the coffin and removed the golden arm from his wife's remain. He ran home as fast as he could, tired from pretending to be sad. Once home, he admired what he had done. The best piece of his lost wife remained with him. He looked up from the arm to realize the day had turned to night. It was a night much like this one, in fact. He tucked the arm into bed beside him and began drifting off to sleep, until he thought he could make out a faint voice in the distant night. He rolled over to try to sleep once more. Then he heard it again. 
This time closer. This time definitely a voice. It sounds like a woman's voice, calling out in the distance. He listened carefully, but it grew louder and clearer until he could make it out. My arm, my golden arm. He thought, oh no, perhaps somebody discovered I took it. The voice grew closer outside his window now. It almost sounds like his wife. Who took my golden arm? But it couldn't be, the man thought. He heard the porch steps creaking. Golden arm, he heard the front door swing open. And this time he heard it clear as day. Where's my golden arm? His wife's voice moaned. He heard footsteps through the downstairs dining room and creaking up the stairs. The man hid under the covers, paralyzed by his situation. Surely this is a dream. He heard the handle turn and his bedroom door creaking open. Where's my golden arm? The man was shaking as he felt a hand grab the quilt before they are ripped away. Do you have it? Ooh, so scary. My socks are nowhere to be seen. Well, well, until next time, I appreciate you listening to a lonely beachgoer's haunting tale. <laughs>